the conscience into us. He's given us understanding and knowledge. And I want to put the first scripture up on Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. Now, while he's putting that up there, I want to read this. Our conscience will correct and reprimand, reprimand so as to render us uneasy when we fail short of the glory of God. And I want to give you a little example of that. And, and, and uh, I, uh, last week, and I told Frank this, and he told me a, a tremendous story. I don't know if he feels led to share that this morning. If, if he does, he could come, come down after I share mine. If he doesn't, then we'll go on. But I thought it was very, very good, and it really encouraged me. So I had to come over to the church building, and uh, <clears throat> I got my keys and everything and put my coat on and my sock cap on, pulled it way down like that, and so I made sure I was all cozied up before I went out in the, in the wind. And so I, I, I go out and I sit in the car, but I didn't bring my wallet because I'm only going over here. I don't really need my driving license just to drive over here, do I? That's what we think. <laughs> but as I was sitting there, God spoke to me. I felt an uneasiness when I was in the car. And I knew what it was. I didn't have my wallet. I didn't have my driving license with me. But I'm only going across the road. You cannot argue against your conscience. And I knew it. I'm well trained by the Holy Spirit in that area I knew exactly what I had to do I got out of the car and that's a lot of trouble getting out of a car in it for some of us <laughs> you've got to know how to pivot you know get one leg out this way they don't make cars like they used to they used to just step out of them you got to spin out of them now but anyway so I got out of the car went back in the house got my wallet Come back and sit in the car, and I felt fine. That uneasy feeling left. See, that's how God teaches us, you know? And so I come over, I go back. I shared it with Susan, and I shared it Wednesday night. So I want you to be conscious of your conscience. Does that sound okay? <laughs> conscious of your conscience. So many people that are not unhappy... Because, because we're complex. Man is very complex. And you have to learn what is bothering you, you know? A lot of people that I have dealt with and I realize it was just their conscience. And the Bible talks about uh, our conscience. Let me just read a few of them in the Bible. The Bible talks about weak conscience, defiled conscience, Conscience void of offense, pure conscience, conscience seared with a hot iron, conscience bearing witness, the testimony of our conscience, the answer of a good conscience towards God. I have those here. We sort of covered a few of them in our Bible study this morning. Our conscience can work for us or against us. And I want to read this scripture here. Are we ready? It's on the board. For since the law has merely a, a, merely a rude outline, foreshadowing of the good things to come, basically the, the gospel of Christ, Christ himself, instead of fully expressing those things, that is the, the law cannot, it can never be, never by offering the same sacrifices continuously, year after year, making perfect those who approach its altars. Go to the next verse. For it were, for if it were otherwise, would these sacrifices not have stopped being offered. So if these 
uh, blood offerings, these lambs, these cows and sheep, if they did the job, if they cleansed our conscience from all sin, if they would cleanse us totally and make us perfect, then we just continue on doing it. Do you see that? That's what it says there. All right. But since the worshipers had once for all been cleansed, they would no longer have any guilt of consciousness of sin. There's a lot of people that go to church today and they are consciously, their conscience is bothering them because they still believe that they're just old sinners and they're just a worm in the cabbage patch and their conscience bothers them and don't realize that the offering was given once and for all to cleanse them from all sin and God has made them holy. And as long as they think they're just a old sinner, they act that out in their emotions, their feelings, and their behavior pattern. Can we understand that? Can we understand that? Because a lot of that is people's troubles. How do you see yourself today? Now, the Old Testament sacrifices only reminded them of their sins. The sacrifice that Christ gave of himself cleanses us from all sin and has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. But how many times you yourself would think of some, or the devil would bring to your attention some of the sins that you did way back when you were on this side of the cross. David, would you bring the cross up for me right here, son? Appreciate it. Right up here. On this side of the cross, lost because of the disobedience of one man, Adam, we all became sinners. But when God did that work and we accepted Christ as our Savior and Christ died on the cross and we died with him, the old past the old condition, the old spiritual condition done away with, and we come out on this side as resurrected saints, saints, totally, absolutely perfect and clean before God. But if your conscience has not been trained and, and, and doesn't understand that, then it's going to identify with the old man over there, and you still feel like you are a worm in the cabbage patch. How many can identify with that? Hmm? You bet you you can. Now, it don't happen all the time, but the devil will bring up, I'll guarantee you, some of the things you did back in the old, in, in the old life. Now, I'm going to be honest. Some of those things were, hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Huh? You start dwelling on, hey, I wasn't too, wait a minute. I've been bought with a price. I belong to God now. That's part of my, that's the old record. That's all been cleared. That's done. Let's say you uh, pay your rent once a week. And you paid it and you knew you paid it. And the landlord comes up a week later after you paid it and said, you owe me for this month's rent. Aren't you glad you got your receipt? Yeah. Now, if you didn't believe that, if you didn't have the receipt, you were probably thinking, well, I thought I paid it. Didn't, didn't, didn't we pay it? But if I think that I still owe it, it's going to bother me. It's going to bother you. But when you know it's already been dealt with, it's been paid for, you can look the at land, the landlord in, in, in the eyes and say, no, I paid it. That's it. You can have confidence when you talk to him. It's paid in full. And by the way, I got a receipt. And his name is Jesus. See, if you don't program your mind right, if you don't understand the scripture, if we don't understand what the Lord has done, we'll still walk around over here thinking we're just an old sinner when Christ made us holy before God cleansed us 
yet our conscience is still bothering us because we haven't applied the blood and we need a good dose of the blood of Christ coming in to clean our conscience from everything in the past. All right, let's go on with the scriptures. I've wrestled with this myself. If you're honest, how many sits down and, and, and talks to yourself? Let me see your hands. A couple of folks. And then you take the scriptures and you talk to God about this. Now, Lord, I do, you know, what, what's, what's this? You know, what's that? Uh, uh, Susan, what's this word? And she'll look it up in the dictionary. And, uh, you know, we get down into the nitty gritty and, and get it all clear. Make sure we understand. So when I finish this message, I want to bring it to a conclusion that we'll understand what we're talking about. We just don't want to hear but don't hear. How many understand what I'm talking about? I'm out here fussing. Oh, I just love to see people learn and gain that knowledge because my people perish without the knowledge. They're miserable without the right knowledge of God. They don't, they, they're mad at themselves. They're kicking the dog. Uh, they don't know why they feel like they feel. And many times, it's just that our conscience is bothering us even though we are forgiven, but our conscience is still convicting us that we're still an old sinner. During the uh, dinner back there last week, I certainly enjoyed that food, by the way. I was talking to one of the sisters from out of town. Yeah, I preached from the King James Version. I said, well, that's good. I preached from that for years, too. I love the King James. I checked, I checked that out with the Amplified and the Love Bible and all the transitions that we have today on the computer, and I check all these verses out, and wow, I tell you. But right now I'm preaching from the Amplified because it's Amplified. You don't have to look all the words up. They, they word it out for you, give you words out in the Old Testament. It, it can move us along a lot quicker. You take it as they got preached with whatever translation you want. That's good. She said, oh, I'm King James. I'll have sin and come short of the glory of God. Where, where do you think she's at? <laughs> I said, yeah, I, I know that. That's, I, I can tell you the scripture, by the way. I can, I can quote it for you. You want me to quote it for you? Huh? It's in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Yeah, all have sinned and come short. I said, did you know you're righteous? No, I'm not right. All have sinned and come short of the glory. I know that. But the very next verse, put it up there, if you will. Just put it up there for me there, Willie. Uh, Romans 3.24. Romans 3.24. All are justified and made upright and in right standing with God, freely and graciously, by His grace, His unmerited favor and mercy. That's what grace is. Notice this. Through the redemption which is provided, provided in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, what side are you guys on? <laughs> From where you're sitting, you're on where? What side? The left side. All right. How many is it still over on this side? See, now, your conscience is going to eat you alive. You're telling God, no, what Christ did on the cross didn't justify me. I'm still an old, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I knew that. I've preached it for years. But folks, when you become a child of God, you are out of the kingdom of darkness, translated by God's grace into God's kingdom. Now, he did it, and I am not going to argue no more with God. How about you? But how many we have? How many has fought the fight? Let me see your hands. Come on. How many has fought the fight that you're still an old sinner? How many in here just couldn't grasp the fact that you're a saint, but you, somewhere in your lifetime, maybe not now, but you have fought, I'm just an old sinner. Now, come on, Ray, everybody raise your hand, I know. I done dealt with too many folk. I'm trying to help you here now, listen to me. Some of you are still in your mind, you're still an over sinner. Yeah, but you know, I fussed at my wife last week. Well, what's new? Did you ask her to forgive you? Yes. 
Did you ask God to forgive you? Yes. Did the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you? Ah, I don't know. I, I don't I don't I don't know. You're going to stay miserable until you accept and receive what the Lord has done. There's just something in us. Oh, not me. <laughs> I, I could. I, I, oh, it was the Lord. Yeah, I knew it was the Lord, and the Lord was in you, and you were an instrument in His hands, and He did it through you. I learned something a long time ago. I learned this from Bob Mumford. Anybody remember Bob Mumford? I know you remember. He would preach a good message, you know, and uh, people would come up and say, Bob, that was the best message I ever heard. Say, oh, it was the Lord. You know, he would, that's all he would say. They'd come up and say, man, that was good, Bob. I really appreciate it. That really helped me. Well, it was the Lord. But he learned something. He said, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Then he would get home, get on his knees, and say, Lord, we are workers together. And all the compliments that was given to me, I lay at your feet. And thank you, Father, that I can collect all of this for you and give it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello? Hello? That's better than, oh, it was the law. Oh, oh no. Hogwash. Yes, it's Jesus in us. Collect it all and then give it to How many of you, when you get all your rewards and you go to heaven, you're going to keep, ah, ha, these are mine. Ha, ha, ha. No, I'm going to lay them at the feet of Jesus. Then he'd probably say, son, I don't need I've got so many of them. Susan's been laying so much at my feet. I don't need no more here. You take them. See, if we don't get our thinking straight, the war is over. The battle is over. It was won at Calvary. I won't hear no amen in here. Are y'all hearing me? Do I hear an amen over here? Do I hear one here? Here, 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 here. here. Amen. amen. Do we understand we're free? We're free. <laughs> we're free. Now, let's read on. See, if you don't accept that, the Holy Spirit cannot flow through somebody that still thinks they are a worm in the cabbage patch. He needs somebody to cooperate with him and flow through the vessels that know that they've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Now, thank God God's provided if we do mess up somewhere, how many of you know we can confess it and God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Does he do that? Do you accept it? Do you walk away from it, that and say, God, thank you? Now, the next thing is your conscience. Are you not forgiven? The Bible says that we need to cleanse our conscience from all dead works. And you do that. By saying, Lord, thank you that when I did sin, I offended my conscience. But I thank you for giving me of the sin. Now, this is an added thing for you to understand. And I thank you for cleansing my conscience from that sin. You got it? Now, you should walk away not feeling put down and guilty. Oh, I am speaking such truth here that I don't hear nobody even grunt. Are you hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church? I don't sense a lot of doubt, unbelief somewhere in the atmosphere. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Let's finish reading it. This is powerful. All right. What's the next verse? We got it there. Okay, I said, all are justified and made upright and in right standing with God, freely and graciously by His grace, His unmerited favor and mercy through the redemption. All right, we're on the next one now. Whom God put forward, that's in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2. I mean, cha Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2.
For, it, for if it were otherwise, would these sacrifices not have stopped being offered? But they didn't do the job. So they stopped doing those offerings since the worshipers had once for, for all been cleansed. Everybody say, once, once. for all, all been cleansed. Amen. They would no longer have any guilt or consciousness of sin. Oh, read that, my children. Suck it in. Chew it up. Get it in the side of your being. Do you still have consciousness of sins? Hmm? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I knew that. But all have been justified. Yeah. Say, I'm justified. justified. Now, you may be having a hard time saying that if your conscience is condemning you. It ain't God condemning you. I don't think it's the devil right now. I think it, I, see, I'm trying to get us to get in contact with our conscience. Some of y'all deep thought. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh. Do I have anybody to come up and testify about the freedom that you have in Christ at this moment? Somebody. Just come out and just testify to how this truth has set you free. I thank you for our sister. This truth that you don't have to go around. Jesus said, my, 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 my burden is light. Amen. Let me get the... All right. I remember when I first came here, um, used to hear a lot of sermons um, speaking about sin more than speaking about the grace of God, the love of God, and the righteousness that was given to me. And a while back, I just thought after Pastor Bob was preaching on that during that time, then I know for sure I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. I know that. It mm -hmm. was just so freeing mm -hmm. to, to believe that I am, and it's not because of me, mm -hmm. but it's because of Christ. That's right. When he took my sin, mm -hmm. he gave me his righteousness. That's right, you got it. And I am a righteous woman Ooh. in Christ. Hey, oh, that's powerful, powerful. So many times, you know, we've been talking about <clears throat> quenching or grieving the Holy Spirit. I really believe, and I'm talking about myself, I'm in the pot you are. You, know, you ever seen a stew that got a lot of meat in there? I'm piece, one of those little pieces of meat in there. Susan's a, Susan's a potato. Have we got any carrots in here? But anyway, when you come to, 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 to comprehend and understand what he paid for to make us holy and righteous, in the sight of God. Let me tell you something. That word perfection, change it to maturity. Okay? Look at it as mature. That's where God is bringing us in our actions and our everyday obedience and, and discipleship to bring us into maturity because as mature sons, we act differently. But to become mature, we have to understand, first of all, what Christ did for us, because we could not do it ourselves. It is not in man no, to know how to walk, to know how to do it. We'll mess up every time. So that's why we have to come to that place to understand that we have a conscious, 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 yeah. And if that consciousness is constantly being offended, because if we still think that we're just still old sinners. No, we've been separated from the world. You'll still fit in with the world. 
But we are a chosen generation. We are a priesthood. Now, once that gets into the fiber of our being, we will talk different, pray different, look different, and just be different. Call me what you want. I know who I am in Christ. I have a brand new identification. I am not what I used to be because that is gone, dead, buried. Now, listen to this. The old way of doing things in the Old Testament, those sacrifices only reminded the people of their sins. Over here, the devil reminds us of our sins. And if we don't get the message straight, we'll never get our conscience clear and straight. That ain't me no more. I'm a new creature in Christ. Behold, all things have become new. But you've got to believe it. <coughs> it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, uh, put that on the board, uh, I believe it is. Hebrews 4, 2. Mm, this, is, can you put like some green behind that? It's so hard to see. That pink. Is there some other color you can put behind that? Or It's a pink color. What color is it up here? Is that, what is that? Blue? Purple? All right. Mm, 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 mm. Let, let's, let's start with verse 2, okay? Verse 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Let's start with verse 1. I'll tell you, this is all so good. Are we there? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 first. Then we'll go over to... All right, are we ready? Since all this is true, what I've been preaching this morning, <laughs> we are to pay much closer attention than ever to the truths that we have heard, lest in any way we drift past them and slip away. Let's just meditate on that. That's why we have to hold these truths. Hey, that's much better. Can, anybody see that better than that blue? Much better. You mean we can drift past them? We can drift away? Does that mean we're lost? I'm not making that statement right now. But I tell you what, our conscience becomes so seared. And you know what happens is, this is what I've seen, little by little, People start not assembling themselves together. They, they slip away. And I look out there and I don't see them no more. And I say, oh boy. They're in that avenue. Their hearts are being cold. Their conscience is bothering them. Bob, behave yourself. Okay. <laughs> Look at verse 2. For if the message given through angels, the law spoken by them to Moses was authentic and proved sure, and every violation, disobedience received an appropriate, just, and adequate penalty. Next verse. How shall we escape appropriate retribution? In other words, God's going to correct us. It, if we neglect and refuse to pay attention to such a great salvation, notice, great salvation, as is now offered to us. For it was declared at first by the Lord himself, and it was confirmed to us and proved to be real and genuine 
by those who personally heard him speak. And you go back and you find out there was hundreds of people heard Christ speak in his resurrect, resurrection self, body. He appeared to 500 brethren and the apostles. So it's true. Absolutely true. Now go to, if you will, well, let's read on that next verse. I like that. Verse 4. Besides this evidence, what evidence? See, to remember what we just read, you'd have to back up, wouldn't you? What evidence? It was, it was proved to be real, genuine, by those who personally heard him speak. So all of those apostles heard him speak. They saw him. They touched him. They felt him. And it was proven to be true. And he says, besides this evidence, that is the evidence of all the 12 apostles and all the people seeing him in his resurrected body, also seeing him for those three and a half years that he preached uh, on the earth, they saw him. They saw him do miracles. That's evidence. That's evidence that we're preaching Christ. Besides this evidence, it was also established and plainly endorsed by God. Who showed his approval, that is, God showed his approval of it by signs and wonders and various miracles. Manifestations of his power and by imparting the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the believers according to his own will. Now let that just sink in. So many times we just preach and nobody... And I've been out there too. What do you say? What did you say? Just let it sink in. See that imparting, that impartation? You're hearing some things that I'm saying, but there are certain things being imparted to you by the Holy Ghost through your shepherd how many knows that they know that they know that they know <laughs> you just know that you know that you know that our redeemer liveth amen <laughs> you just know somebody says well prove god well let me tell you my experience in god i walked into a church one day 26 years old full of everything Preacher wasn't even preaching. He's making announcements. I still think the Lord just took me by the collar. It felt like I just came down there. What am I doing here? The preacher said, what do you want? I want to be saved. No preaching, no nothing. And I walked out of that church totally changed. Went back on Monday morning to air base with my little Bible witnessing and, can, and acknowledging that Jesus Christ is now my Lord. And I had some of the people laugh and say, yeah, it'll last about three weeks. Well, here's 57 years later. Hallelujah. I'm as hot as I ever was. Susan B. went to, to Walmart the other day. I can't remember the days anymore. I don't try to. I got a good secretary. It reminds me. <clears throat> And I gave 10 Bible booklets away and told 10 jokes, more than 10 jokes to the people. You know how I do. And I want to give a testimony that every one of them was saved. Now, that was a blessing to me. Yeah, I knew the Lord. I knew the Lord. And boy, we started talking. And I said, well, if you die right now, where would you go? I'd go to heaven. I mean, how do you know that? I just knew it. So you learn when you deal with people. Hello, don't wake up now. Don't go to sleep. We got a new deal. I got a button. Did, did, did Frank tell you about the button we got behind here? If you fall asleep, the chair falls out from under and you go down. <laughs> I woke you up, didn't it? Ten people, every one of them. But we just had a great time. I said, God, leave me somebody don't know you. But it excited me because, wow, there's more people that know the Lord than we think, you know. See, you get an overall picture of, of, you know, of a lot of what's going on out there. Now, God is stamping this thing down and saying, listen, we got witnesses. Witnesses. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Tilton. 
Rufus. I mean, sorry, Willie. Willie, Frank, Missy, Susan, Charles, all of us, Michelle, witnessing. Well, Bob, suppose that they, they uh, come down. You no, know, I know they got those cameras, you know. So every once in a while I say, come on down, I'll tell you about it. <laughs> I'm not afraid to go to jail. I know, I know, I know uh, Justine will make me a cake. I know that <laughs> Linda will, and you guys will be praying. And say, I'm not scared. Fear shall not dominate me. I mean, there's no fear at all. None. Just like there's no fear here, right here. I can just free as a breeze. Stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Folks, let me tell you something. I'm 82 years old. Don't tell nobody, but on March 11th is my birthday. Don't tell nobody. But anyway, <clears throat> I'll be 82 years old. If I don't know something by now, you guys don't stand a chance. Is that not true? Do you realize I've been through it all? More than one time. And I tell you, the fire won't hurt you. Because it'll burn off a lot of that old garbage. And you come out pure. That's the way it works. God working in us, making us willing to do His good pleasure. Now, oh, this is so good. All right, I want to run over here. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Mm -hmm. Let's run over here to chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Then we'll get back on the conscience a little bit. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still holds and is offered today, I need to realize there should be a rest in our life, and it's offered today. Now, I want to pass this by your minds. They didn't have the Bible back then. Oh, they had the Old Testament. Paul preached a lot from the Old Testament. But we have the New Testament. I love it. And I want to encourage you that, that if, if, if one verse begins to come a little alive, dwell on that verse. One word can spark something. One word, revelation knowledge, can come in. One word being made alive can open the funnel of heaven and pour in revelation knowledge in your life, and you come up. Hallelujah! Do, do you understand that? Are, are you there yet? <coughs> one word! Now, therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still holds and is offered today, so there's a rest that God is talking about. We're not talking about heaven here. We're not talking about the promised land. Let us be afraid to distrust it, lest any of you should think he has come too late and has come short of reaching. No, we can still reach for it. It's a rest. Next verse. Now he says, for indeed we have had the glad tithings, gospel of God, proclaimed to us just as truly as they, the Israelites of old did, when the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them. But, now notice the same message, but the message they heard did not benefit them. Why? Always ask the question, why? Because it was not mixed with faith. With the leading of the entire leaning of the entire personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. By those who heard it, neither were they united in faith with the one, one, ones, uh, Joshua and Caleb, who heard and did believe. Now, you know the story. I don't, do I have to go over the story? 
How many read the Bible? All right, you know the story. Two people believed. And why did they not enter? Because of belief. See, we might not know why we are. The enemy might, might have so deceived you. Now remember, this message goes out into the world. That you're now walking in unbelief. And you go through all the acts. And yet you're walking in unbelief. Now check yourself out. What is your conscience talking about this morning? Are they clear? Yes. Hmm? How many know you've got a conscience? All right. He'll talk to you. Valentine's Day was... <sighs> Saturday before last. Well, there ain't no need to buy a card for Susan. Let's see what type of candy I like. Because <laughs> I know I'm going to help her eat uh, three quarters of it anyway. <laughs> She's like a little bird. Pick, pick. I'm like a hog. <laughs> just kidding, I'm just kidding. Ain't no need to buy a card. I mean, I could give this money to somebody that needs it, like me. <laughs> but you know what? My conscience started working. And I couldn't wait to get down to the drugstore and get her a card and some candy. Now, I was going to get this big box of candy. I said, no, that's not good for both of us. <laughs> so I got this little box of candy for her. See, now, it, it, it's the thought behind it. Well, it was bigger than that. It was, you know, about like that, you know. Did you enjoy that candy, darling? Thank you. <laughs> is, is that all I get? Oh, no, don't go there. You know, we married, you know. You know that, don't you? Okay. <clears throat> but see, my conscience directed me. Now, just think, if I didn't buy the card and didn't buy the candy, my conscience would bother me. Is that not true? Would it bother you? How many men in here gave their husband, uh, their husband, let's see, how many men in here? <laughs> Gave their wives, gave their wives something for Valentine. Let's see your hands. Well, you gave her something anyway. Yeah, I'm the only one. Did you give one, two? One, two, both of your shoes, three to get ready and four to go. Is your conscience bothering you? No, uh, I am. Uh, uh. Verse 3, for we ha who have believed, uh, heaved to, and trusted in, and relied on God, do enter that rest. And if you are in that rest, that you know you're saved and born again and been fully justified, sanctified, and made holy, you are in a rest. And you're not striving to be number one. You're not striving to be number two. You just have that peace of God and you are in a rest. And whatever God wants me to do, I'm glad to do it. Cutting the grass, preach, teach. I've done it all in my life. I've even cleaned the bathrooms out. I had a young man come to me. Bob, I feel like I'm being going to be led to be an evangelist. I said, oh, well, that's, that's really great to be called by God. You need to be called by God, you know. 
I'd just like for you to, to you know, to, to, to tutor me. Give me a chance to preach. I said, well, let's see. I tell you, are you, are you submitting yourself to me? Yeah, I'm going to submit my... I said, the first thing I want you to do, go back there. There's a plunger back there in that bathroom. You know, get with Rick over there and Missy, and they'll show you how to use that baby, you know. And you'd use that for about a year or two and clean the bathrooms up, and then, and then come back, and we'll talk about you preaching. Well, I hadn't seen that boy since. That's how I started out. Susan and me started out vacuum cleaning every, any job on it in the church. We were glad to do it. And we were faithful. Say faithful. That's important. Faithfulness is important. I'm like James. Don't tell me, show me. I'll show you my faith by my good looks. By my works. How do you know that's an apple tree? It bears Apples. Well, you see, not being mean, but that's just the way it is. I cannot believe we got one more hour to go. Oh, you don't think I don't have enough materials? <laughs> I even I think I've read one thing on that one. All right, church. Let's bring this down to a conclusion. You've got to make decisions in your life. The decisions you make today will affect your tomorrow. Michelle was talking about the comfort zone. Let me, let me tell you something about it. And I know what she means, and I've been there too. But I got out of my comfort zone because I knew the blessings were out of the comfort zone, going out there, and just like Jesus, going out on the street, sharing Christ with people. On the job, sharing Christ with people. I had my boss come up to me and say, Mr. Tilton, I don't want you to be able to share uh, religion anymore. I said, no problem. I don't ever share religion. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Well, what are you doing? I'm sharing the good news with people. Did you know that Jesus loves you and he died on the cross for you? Did you know there's salvation waiting for you? That, ah, 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 Before he left, I said, no, wait a minute. I got a good record. You can look at my record. I got all my supervisors, number one, number one, number one, number one, all the way down. I got, I got stuff you can put on the wall. I got more stuff over there. You can paint that whole wall with all the certificates I have in all the years that I've been out in the world. Not bragging, not complaining, just telling you like it is. I said, listen, I noticed that uh, you read your newspaper. Well, <coughs> yes. I noticed some of the boys are reading these here uh, Playboy magazines. <coughs> well, yes. Well, I don't do that. See, I read my Bible. Right. Now, you quit that and I'll quit this. Right. Well, that was it. <laughs> I retired to back year, there. And let's see, how many years I've retired now? I mean, 27 years I've been retired. It's been good, ain't it, baby? Huh? It's been good, yeah. <laughs> Real good. I enjoyed every second, every moment of it. Free! But stand fast in that freedom. Yeah. Now, here's how you know you're going back. You don't have as much interest in church anymore. You don't want to meet with the saints of God. You don't realize you're the church. You just can do whatever you want to do, and your, your conscience don't bother you no more. You endanger territory. You need to repent. Get the blood of Christ, cleanse your conscience, straighten up, do what you know to do. If you do what you know to do, you'll stay out of trouble. Very, I, I didn't create none of this word, by the way. I only preach it. How many understand that? I'm just, you know, put that rock down back there. Uh, uh, if you hit me, hit me on the shoulder over here. I got one good shoulder. No spitballs there, buddy. All right. My job, the teachers of this church, is to preach the truth because I have to change. You got to change. But you see, we come out of our comfort zone into the zone of blessedness, usefulness, strength, power. That's how it works. I've seen people in these chairs. When they get up, the chair sticks to them. 
How many's ever seen that? I think they put glue or something because in case the preacher wants them to come up and give a testimony. Of course, with this group, if I say, well, anybody, I mean, wait a minute, one at a time now. How many understand what I'm talking about? Come to be freedom. Come to share Christ. Come to tell the world what the Lord has done. Praise God. He came out of the kingdom of darkness. Put me in the kingdom. I'm a child of light. Let your little light shine. Let your little light shine. And after a while, let your big light shine. It's so wonderful. All I can say, and I know you, most of you know that. Some of you still, you know, wobbling. You haven't come into that rest. Uh, you know, you don't know whether you want to give up that chocolate bar or not. And God don't mind if you eat a piece of chocolate. I mean, I eat one. Well, the other day, I, well, I, I, I finished the box anyway. But anyway... <laughs> It's right there in front of you. It's temptation. What are you going <laughs> to? But there's moderation to all things that we know that. But I don't have to say nothing. What is your conscience saying to you this morning? Oh, that's a good one. What is your conscience saying? What is your conscience saying? <laughs> Alice, are you praising God for a good conscience or you want to come up and share? I'm praising God for a conscience. And you're in a rest. Oh, oh isn't it wonderful to be in that rest? So if you want to come out of your comfort zone, out of that zone that you feel so boxed in and condemned, except what the Lord has done, you know what he's telling you to do. Do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it, and you'll keep your conscience clear. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now, we teach you how to do it here, don't we? All right. Now, don't go out here with a bad conscience. You don't have to tell me. I want everybody to say, Lord, Lord I, know blood I know the blood has cleansed me has cleansed from all sin. all sin. But there are some things, are some things. in my conscience that I need to square up. So right now, the same blood that cleansed me from my sins is cleansing my conscience from all dead works. I'm clean. Thank you, Jesus! Hallelujah! <clears throat> Just like you wash your face once a month, or once every two weeks, or whatever, you got to deal with these other things that, because we're spirit beings, okay? You understand that. So it's up to us to, to do that. Now, praise God. If you need prayer, come up. We'll be glad to pray for you. Uh, if not, turn to somebody and say, wow, I'm glad I'm in that rest. Okay, R-E-S-T, rest. Hallelujah.